Oliver, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Investor. My pleasure. You've talked about the use of data. Big data has been mm -hmm. a big sort of buzzword, if you like, in the industry for a while, but you're talking about smart data, which is slightly different. Well, I think as long as we're talking about private equity, we have to admit the data isn't all that big. It's still relatively scarce. It is still relatively unreliable in some areas, despite the good efforts of all the data gatherers. So I would actually think it's, it's much more important to use the right metrics to make this data speak, to empower it, and turn it into smart data. And as, uh, as people sometimes heard me say before, my running metaphor there is the, for the famous king in the land of the blind who needs one eye. And with smart data, we actually give people the ability to see a little bit in a world where, honestly, many still fly blind until today. And you've actually looked at data going back so that you can look forward. Just explain that for me. Well, it's, it's the kind of academic approach to see what can we learn from the past in so-called backtesting. So the case in point was a study I presented here earlier about how you derive value predictors for secondary fund stakes and the way you do this then is to see let's turn back the clock let's turn back the clock for instance until 2011 analyzing data available at the time on investment opportunities that were there look at what could have informed you to make or not make this investment or specifically how to price that investment and then look at today to see well how would have this investment had turned out had you made it in 2011. You do this systematically, you do this a couple of hundred times, and then you ba go basically back and forth and try out what would have been good things to look at. And you do it then in a way that you know, doesn't just capture an outlier, but that systematically is a reliable predictor, and then you get as good as you possibly can in a data-driven fashion to learn something that may inform your decision-making going forward. Now, this is all very well, but we live in very volatile times. So yeah. can this use of data survive a, a landscape like we see at the moment in terms of the geopolitical outlook? Well, it's always difficult, but again, you're not striving for perfect science. You want directionally better insights that you would otherwise get. Um, people don't have the luxury to say, these are volatile times, this is difficult, I'm not going to do it. Our role is to bring good analytics to the industry to say, well, how can you still get the best possible insights? Is the world now the same as a year ago? No. Is the world in emerging markets private equity comparable in China now than 10 years ago? It's totally different. But in some of these areas, especially in the relatively stable economies, you see something with a predictive power. And predictive power is always relative, right? I mean, statistically speaking, yes, you may get a few percentage points more likely to hit the famous top quartile. That's a, very sta that's a very tiny statistical finding. What does this drive in terms of portfolio outperformance based on our research? That can drive a couple of hundred basis points annual outperformance. So it's a small signal, it's a, it's a tiny increase in hit rate, but it drives big returns, and I think that's ultimately the advantage of it. Is this industry truly embracing this, though? Because they've seen themselves as a sort of touchy-feely people business for a long time. They build those relationships, it's all about trust. So are they really going to embrace data as something that is realistically going to be part of their everyday outlook? I think it is part of their everyday outlook. Some use it to confirm their gut feel, some use it to inform their gut feel. I don't think there are few shops out there who just ignore data altogether. Um, I'm obviously biased here, but I firmly believe there is a trend towards more data users, smart data users going forward. How long it'll take, I don't know. But I just think that it's inevitable for an industry that have come to the scale to have better metrics in place, to be more standardized, more reliable. People will look at this from regulators' perspective, look for scrutiny, and so it's important for the industry to say, well, we have our act together, and a discussion with a possible regulator is much more substantive to say, well, here are a couple of data points that we use to understand this industry, direct money to the right funds, rather than saying, well, we all know each other and our gut feel tells us to make the right decisions. I'm not criticizing or questioning everybody's intuition and gut feel. Just at least at this level of communication, I think uh, solid data will, will be a, a good, good thing to look at as well. And is this actually a signal that the data is being embraced? Is it a signal that this industry has changed a lot in terms of it, it is becoming more of an institution, if you like, than it used to be? Well, ab absolutely. I think the days of this as the famous cottage industry are definitely over. People look at this increasingly. Um, and one case in point, one of the most skeptical clients we ever pitched to as Parax offering fund analytics says to us something along the lines of Oliver, you cannot benchmark us, we're totally unique, we're artists. And granted, this, is a, this was years ago. This is a great firm, I trust them. They are phenomenal and they're probably unique. But if any LP in the world has to justify to their committee why they like this uniqueness over somebody else's uniqueness, welcome to the work of comparison, i.e. benchmarking. Yeah. So even the artist at some point needs some reference point and comparability, and it'll be to the benefit of all parties in the industry. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been fascinating insight. Thanks, Oliver. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.